What's up guys, my name is Juan and you're watching my channel Blueprint PC. So in this video, hell hath frozen over and maybe the market has improved because I was actually able to get hold of a graphics card on launch day. This video is brought to you in part by Enermax. Enermax is a leading manufacturer of high performance PC hardware, including their well-built budget-friendly Cyberbron and Marble Bronze series of power supplies, along with their new Lickmax 3 series AIOs, now available in white. For more information, please check out the link in the description below. I was able to snag one of the RX 6750 XTs several hours after launch. I actually woke up that day, started working, and completely forgot that they were releasing until I saw some notification on my phone later on. I'm like, oh crap, I screwed up, I forgot about it, whoops. And then I hopped on Newegg, hopped on Amazon and Best Buy, and I was actually like, oh crap, they're in stock. You can get them? No way. And then I did. Got the ASRock Challenger Pro. This is a MSRP card, which means essentially it's an entry level version of the 6750. Now, before I dig into this one, I do wanna preface this with simply saying, I'm gonna do a follow-up video. I'm gonna do the benchmarks in a follow-up video, along with comparing it to a 6700 XT with an OC, non-OC'd, and then also a separate 3070 in another video as well to kind of compare, you know, bang for the buck, which one will, you know, win overall anyway, and then just, you know, if it's worth to buy it, upgrade, etc. So going on from there. But again, this is an MSRP card, so it's not gonna be too crazy special or anything like that, but it should be a good example of this. Again, it's a triple fan, so I'm hoping at least versus a dual fan or a smaller card, we should get some decent performance out of it. And I also have the Challenger D version of the 6700 XT. So it should be as close to a fair comparison as I can probably do right now. So let's go ahead, let's open it up, let's talk about it. All right, so like I stated, I'm gonna try to keep this one quick here for you and get it straight to the meat and potatoes. When you open it up, you get a graphics card, a box, some foam, and a quick installation guide. There are no extra trinkets or goodies in the box. And again, that's to be expected with an entry level MSRP card. You know, usually when you start buying the higher tier board partner cards, part of that cost that you pay extra for on top of the better cooler and RGB and stuff is the little badges and stickers and other, you know, dumb stuff that they put in the box for you. So overall, quick rundown of my personal opinions on the aesthetics of it. I don't think it looks bad. It's a triple fan design. It kind of reminds me of the old uh, RTX like 20 series uh, gigabyte WinForce cards. It just kind of gives me that feel and you know aesthetic presence. Uh, it's got a nice backplate on it. Uh, it's metal. It's not plastic, which some people have done, which I think was a bad idea. I don't know what type of metal this is. Azurex website didn't state, so I don't know if it's steel, aluminum, whatever. A uh, couple things I do want to point out is you probably can't see, I'll try to see if I can get a better picture of it, but there are thermal pads between the die and the memory chips and the back plate, so it'll actually transfer heat from one to the other, so that's a plus. Uh, another neat thing, which might be because it's the same PCB for the Phantom D that ASRAC also sells, is there's a notch on this part of the PCB here, and if you look right behind the back plate, which again, you probably won't be able to see, but there's an on-off you know, silk screen down there. So potentially, this could have had a like a silent or standard BIOS and then like an OC BIOS, which would have had dual BIOS, which I think would have been a nice thing to include on this regardless, because again, if you look at the, the back plate, here's your PCB. All this cooler is excess. They're kind of copying what NVIDIA did with the blow through design, which a lot of other cars have done in this two general, the generations of the 6000 and the 3000 series. So it hopefully should have really good cooling efficiency on this one and make a decent, you know, performing card. Considering the fan, you know, starts, like this is about the fan hub. So more than half of this third fan is actually blown out the back. So that should perform pretty well. Other than that, there's really nothing too crazy going on with it. But again, it's simple, it looks good. It's neutral enough design to where it should look decent in any case. If you have a good case, it has good flow and whatnot, I would consider vertical mount just because the heat sink does look a little industrial, and if that's not what you're going for, it's not gonna work for you. But other than that, looks pretty good. So let's jump into the specs and we'll talk about it. All right, specs for this card. We have a base clock of 2235, boost clock of 2618, 
and then a game clock of 2512 megahertz. These are all slightly above AMD's stock reference design. VRAM is 12 gigabytes of GDDR6, which should perform well and handle most games you play today, especially at 1440p. The memory speed has been increased to 18 gigabits per second. It still has 40 CUs and 40 ray accelerators, as in the normal 6700 XT. PCI is 4.0 with by 16 lanes. Again, this is a triple fan layout with what ASRock calls their striped axial fans. Cooler material, again, is metal. I'm not sure of the exact specific material, whether it's aluminum or steel, because ASRock did not state, but it does have three copper heat pipes. Software supported is gonna be AMD's Adrenaline Suite, along with their FSR and the other related components there, or you can use ASRock's Tweak 2.0. For outputs, we have three DisplayPort 1.4s, one HDMI 2.1. Dimensions are 303 millimeters long, 131 millimeters wide, and 45 millimeters thick. ASRock calls this a 2.3 slot card. However, it's about two slots wide, but it is pretty tall, so we'll just go with what they say. AMD's reference design states this card is a 250 watt card. I'm unsure of what this one specifically is, as again, ASRock did not state on their website in regards to this. I would assume slightly above that because there is a mild OC. Recommended power supply by AMD would be 650 watts. Per ASRock, they recommend a 700 watt with this card. Power supply connectors required is two 8-pin connectors. All right, guys, so I'm gonna try to wrap this one up quick. Again, we're gonna do a separate video here for the benchmarks, and I apologize for that. Normally, I like to try to at least do those with the unboxing video, but unfortunately, like I said, I ordered this on launch day. I just got it this morning, so I haven't had time to run those yet, but I'm gonna do that plus a bunch of other comparison videos. So again, subscribe to see those. Uh, overall, I just wanna give you guys a better look at this card itself and kind of just run over some of the details of what you might expect to find on other 6750 XTs. Can't really go through pros and cons yet because I haven't benchmarked it, so I don't know how well it's gonna perform. I do have concerns though, because a 6700 XT versus this, 6700 XT was a 479 MSRP. This is a 549 MSRP. That's about a 15-ish percent increase in cost. Hopefully we see a 15% or better performance increase to justify that. If we don't, that's gonna be kind of a, I don't know. It, it may be worth it to some, but if it's less than that, I'm, I wouldn't be interested too much to be honest, but I already bought it, so we're gonna find out. Uh, I would also be concerned that the higher tier versions of this one, like the Phantom or any of the other board partner versions that are going to, you know, get past 600 plus dollars. My concern with those is you're getting close to, uh, you know, an entry level MSRP card for the 6800 non XT. And in all honesty, if you're within 50 bucks of a non XT 6800, I would buy that. You're getting more cores, you're going to get better performance overall. And yeah, again, you might have a higher end version of the 6750 versus a standard, you know, no frills version, but I'm going for performance at that point versus over, over aesthetics. So, but we'll hopefully have some better answers for those in the next videos. I do also want you guys to do me a favor and please put any questions you have in the comments below and obviously throw your comments down there as well. Now, reason being is I want to try to read through and answer any questions that you guys may have or any ideas you guys may have for the follow-up video. So again, I'm gonna try to get those out as fast as possible. So if you have specific questions, I'll try to answer the next one or the one after that. Outside of that, guys, that's all I have for you. I just wanna get this one out here as fast as possible so that way you guys could see, you know, again, a better look at the card and hopefully answer a few questions for you at least. So please hit that like subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.